Johnny Mac and Johnny Mac doing you on Birds 365. Uh, our number two rolling along. We'll have Russell Baxter from Pro Football Guru uh, joining us coming up in uh, less than 15 minutes from now. Uh, John, I, I mentioned the Cowboys before we went to the break. Uh, everybody signing free agents, Eagles with uh, some subtractions because of free agency, some key retentions in free agency, and the Darius Slate thing, getting this an extension done with him, also very much a key. Cowboys didn't go heavy on free agency. They, they kept uh, Van Der Esch, which I thought was a bit of a key move. I think he's a really good player. He's an injury guy that you got to factor in. He's going to miss some time for you, but uh, I still think he's a darn good player. And I thought that was a good re-sign, but they haven't been active in picking up other teams' free agents. And they moved away from Zeke Elliott. That'll be interesting to see how it plays itself out. But they did get two very good established NFL veterans that I think still have something left in the tank in Stephon Gilmore from the Colts and Brandon Cooks from the uh, Houston Texans, both of which they got for a fair price. And with Cooks, uh, they're getting some salary cap relief because uh, Houston was so uh, motivated to move him that they're going to eat $6 million of his salary this upcoming year. Uh, They only had to give up a fifth and a sixth to get two pretty damn well established starters in the National Football League. Uh, that That's not bad business out of the Jones boys down there in Dallas. Um, did did other teams miss out on acquiring these guys? Why do you think they ended up in Dallas <clears throat> rather than elsewhere? Um, hey, you know, I'm in the F them picks category when it comes to good veteran players, and you're talking about day three picks. I really am. I'm like, I don't give a flying – hoot about day three picks if i can you know i i we, i talked about it with tommy with you know step on gilmore it's not about who's best they had a disaster when when uh their second cornerback got injured last year it was a disaster in dallas and now all of a sudden you have trayvon diggs and step on gilmore now maybe they're not as good as bradbury and slay but they're going to be damn good that's going to be a top five tandem if mm-hmm. uh if, if they stay healthy for the whole season, same thing with um, losing Amari Cooper. And all of a sudden you didn't have that secondary guy to CD lamb. And now you have it with Brandon cooks who for whatever reason gets traded so much, but he's still a good productive player. Um, they got better. They got better. And if you sit here and again, it is what it is March 20th, but I say Eagles, 49ers, Cowboys, Maybe Detroit as my top four in the NFC now because I think Detroit's trending in a positive direction. Minnesota's probably negative direction. Um, the Cowboys are are they have a chance and and if you have a chance when I say f them picks, I should add that caveat. When you have a chance, you should f them picks. Now if you're rebuilding, no, keep the picks. Take the lottery ticket, even on day three. But if you're a contender, and again, this is not the NFC, uh, the AFC. This is the NFC. Right. If you're a contender, yeah, have them picks. Let, 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 I'll ask you this. I don't consider the C.J. Gardner-Johnson trade a bad one for the Eagles, even though they lost it. They gave up a damn fifth and a sixth, and they got that season – from C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and by the way, they'll get a compensatory pick. It'll probably only be a, a five or six, but so they get a six. Say it's a six. They get a six-round pick. They got a seventh-round pick, and the year they got from C.J. Gardner-Johnson for a five and a six. I think that's a success. Did they? Uh, they got New Orleans at seventh. Was that part of the deal? I'm forgetting exactly what. Yes, the they got a. It's not. It's not till 2025. But they got a 2025 okay. seventh yeah, round. They got to wait for it a uh, little bit. Um, okay. Yeah. That. Yeah. What was it? A worthwhile deal in 2020 hindsight, knowing he up and left after only one year. Yeah. Damn straight it was. He played well enough to help you get to the Super Bowl this past year. Yeah, I, I make that trade every every day and, and twice on Sunday. So, yeah, Howie Roseman got the better of that. All right, one other reference I want to make uh, from for the Cowboys, um, because I like what they did. I think they added two very solid, established players for minimal cost, 
So they have closed the gap a little bit between themselves and the Eagles. Uh, my buddy, Peter King, uh, his Monday morning column must read for any kind of football fan out there. He did his ranking of the first week of free agency. It's the most important week of movement in the National Football League. Not the most important week, but just changing of players, free agency, Monday to Monday. And he ranked the teams in the National Football League, much to my partner, John McMullen, chagrin. He likes what uh, the Chicago Bears have done. Uh, his embattled GM, as per my buddy, John McMullen, has had a pretty good week. Now he had cap room like no one. $90 million. Uh, yeah, he had a lot of, had a lot of cards to play with, but I think he played them well, and I agree with Peter King on that. Uh, they did win the week, but he ranked all the teams one through fifteen, and then he lumped everybody else in sixteen to thirty-two. He ranked the Eagles as the twelfth best, which isn't great when you go one to fifteen. But if you go one to thirty-two, twelfth is not terrible. And we knew the Eagles were up against it because they had a lot of free agents and only so much cap room to deal with. So he had them 12. He had Dallas 14. So even with the two additions that I like the Cowboys made, he still ranked the Eagles ahead of the Cowboys for their offseason moves. He ranked the Commanders seventh. What the hell did Jacoby Brissett? Really? That That's the answer? I know uh, one guy will disagree with him is Ed Kratz because he thinks Sam Howell's going to step in and take over that job and lead the Commanders to high heights. Not a Sam Howell fan. Uh, but Washington's done nothing, and they still got the whole Snyder mess to, to figure out. I don't get that for a little bit. If you're looking at the three teams, oh, by the Giants, oh, by the way, you had the Giants in the everybody else category somewhere from 16 to 32. You really think the Commanders have had the best offseason in the NFC East, J-Mac? Uh, what have they done? Yeah. Other than getting rid of uh, Daniel Snyder, potentially, which would... You know, oh, if, and, if, and Carson Wentz, and and Car, and more so Daniel Snyder. I don't, I don't want to pile on Carson, but yeah, I mean, look, if they get rid of Daniel Snyder, I think yeah, then it's a a productive off season. I don't know if that's where Peter was going, but if if that's where he's going, I agree with that. I don't know what they've done much from a personnel standpoint. Deron Payne, I mean, that's a good get back, right? Um, true, good extension. Um, that 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 perspective. You know, the shell game, like I said, I think Peter fell for the shell game in Chicago. I mean, that's hanky in people. Well, you're so bad, you got to go up. Yeah, they're going to be better, but that's the shell game. You know, you got all these assets, but you already made mistakes. You don't allocate that much to all, all linebackers, especially when you traded. They traded a better linebacker than the two linebackers they spent $100 million on, Jody. They traded Roquan Smith. Um, and, and they got back Tremaine Ed and TJ Edwards, who I Edmonds, Tremaine Edmonds and TJ, who I love as a player. But let's be honest, Roquan Smith is, um, you know, that's a really good player. So, I mean, you, he you, felt don't, you don't think there's a close comparison between Edmonds and Smith? No, no. Uh... Yeah, maybe he's a better fit for Eberflus, you know. Because he's more of an athletic guy. He's more of a coverage guy, Edmonds. Um, but I'd rather have Roquan. But, you know, they're playing a different style of defense. So maybe he's a better fit stylistically, we always talk about. I can buy into that. But as a whole, yeah, I mean, I yeah, they're playing the shell game that I don't, I don't like. And, of course, they're going to get better because they have to get better. They have to get better. They hit rock bottom. So... I'm not as impressed as Peter is with 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 them. I think I would put, and I don't know where he has them. And and I add CJ into this. I think the Lions, man, I would put the Lions number. The Lions are going to be a contender next year. The Lions, so, Lions were one of his top ten. I don't think it was top five, but I think it was somewhere in the top ten. They're going to be a contender. They've remade that secondary. It's not only Gardner Johnson. That was one of their issues. They signed Cam Sutton from Pittsburgh. They signed the kid from uh, San Francisco. I forget his name. They've remade that entire secondary, and that was one of their big problems. Um, they're good offensively. Like I said, Minnesota's taking a step back. Green Bay's taking a step back. Um, obviously, they're going to lose Aaron Rodgers whenever that happens. Um, 
Chicago's got to be better, but they're not going to be good. They're going to win that division. Uh, they're going to they're going to be uh, a contender at least on the NFC side. Yeah, I, I think you're being harsh on Chicago because from where they started to have a one year major step back, and they surely did. They're the worst team in the National Football League. They got the number one pick. They inherited a bad team with a bad roster that was bad record wise. If you got to take one year stepping back and you st- take a pretty damn good step forward. Now, do I think they're going to go 10 and seven and make the playoffs as a wild card? I'm not going to get that crazy. Although I am damn close to being that big a uh, Justin Fields fan that maybe he could just pull that off. But if they get eight wins, if they get back up to eight, and nine, and they're hovering around 500, that's a pretty good step. As long as they take the next step thereafter. I, I do agree with Peter King. It's nice to have good cards and be able to play them. Uh, and I think Ryan Pauls has done just that. But he's the guy who got himself those good cards by creating that cap space with the deals that he made. And the thing about Volk on- it's, it's I, I hate to pick on them. I have nothing against the Bears. People think I don't like the Bears. I could care less about the Bears. I don't like them. I don't dislike them. It's just such a jumbled mismatch. I think they hired the wrong coach for the quarterback. I think they didn't get an offensive coordinator to help the quarterback. I think, you know, you trade one of the best linebackers in football, and then you spend a hundred million dollars to get another linebacker. It's just, it doesn't make sense. I always say about the Eagles, Jody, their decisions right or wrong make sense. Their decisions in Chicago. This is why it's just like the organization. They don't make sense to me. If you have a young quarterback, I want an offensive bind, cultivating him, cultivating him, making him better, getting him better. Now, you can go about it in different ways. You can hire a defensive head coach, but then you have you better have a really strong uh, uh, quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. And I, I, to be honest, I'd prefer a head coach. But, it, 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 and again, I go back to Luke Getze. He's, he's the caddy for, for Nathaniel Hackett, who I have no respect for. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. He does, you know, get the hell out of his way. And that's what they brought to Justin Fields. And they had, and I saw that offense last year. And this is not a criticism of Justin Fields. It wasn't an offense. It was a Buddy Ryan offense. It was, we got no idea what we're doing. Go make a play. And to his credit, he made a lot of plays. He's got tremendous talent. I'm not saying that. I think the organization makes bad decisions. And that's where I always say the Eagles make good decisions. They don't always work out, but they make you understand the thought process behind the decisions. I don't understand Chicago's decisions. Yeah, I do. And I think trading a guy like Roquan Smith is a a perfect example. You replace him with a very similar linebacker. You think Roquan Smith is that much better than Edmonds? I don't. I think they're two of the best 10 linebackers in the NFL. And, oh, by the way, you get all that draft capital for trading him. Yeah, you take a cap hit this past year because you're trading off a guy who was under contract still on his first contract, so it's not a massive cap hit, but it's a cap tip trading him in the middle of a contract. You replace him with as good a player for the same money, and, oh, by the way, you get the draft capital on top of it as well. I think that's a pretty deft move by the general manager of the Chicago Bears. All right, he's McMullen. I'm McDonald. We are Mac and Mac Birds 365. We'll take a little bit of a step back from the Eagles' perspective. Oh, yeah, we're going to ask our next guest about the Eagles. We're going to ask him about everything that goes on in the NFL. One of the best chroniclers of moves in the National Football League for the last several decades, Russell Baxter, ProFootballGuru.com, going to jump on with us next here on Birds 365. 